My name is Dr. Kafo Chidumeje, CEO at Dr. King Foundation Nigeria, Convener Tritaton, the Lupus Day, the Lupus Day, the Lupus Day, Hand of God, the Lupus Day, the Hand of God. CEO at Dr. King Foundation Nigeria, Convener Tritaton, the Lupus Day. There was an incident that happened here around November last year, November 2023. I was in a public transport heading to heading for an official assi assignment. And then <clears throat> half halfway to my destination, the uh, uh, one of the passengers uh, uh, raised the alarm that he wants to the passenger should be around 70 plus, maybe almost 80. So the driver, a very kind-hearted person, stopped by the side of the road and told the man to step down and urinate. So we made way for the man. The man came down. Ten minutes later, the man was still there. Fifteen minutes later, he was still there. So most of us were not like, ah, Papa, do fast now so that we all start going. We start that we're already in a hurry. We're already late. And I looked at the man, I saw the man was like crying. So I came out, went closer to him, I was like, Papa, what is the problem? The man told me that uh, he, he's been trying to unite the thing, stop coming out, and the thing is paining him, he's holding him so much. So I looked at him, I raised up the clothes, touched the clothes, I saw the blood that was seriously engorged and swollen. So I knew it was a uh, urinary retention. <clears throat> so I now told him whether he has ever had this experience before, he said no. And we were in the middle of nowhere. In fact, the next health facility should be should be like two hours away. Now, in my bag, you know, now a doctor. Now, in my bag, I normally have this uh, catheter. It's not like I've ever thought I would ever use it for, any, for anything serious. So I just had this catheter. Had, of course, I always have this hand sanitizer, hand uh, sanitizer, hand uh, nose mask, tissue, all those stuff. So what I did was I I brought the. The, I told him, Papa, I'm going to insert this thing, use this thing and insert. Let me know whether we can, I can help you with this particular catheter. I just have catheter, I don't have a urine bag. So I, I, told, I brought uh, my hands at some sanitizer and uh, of course I had a pair of gloves, wore my glove and then brought out the catheter. I just used water to wash the mouth of the penis but there was no salve and all the stuff. Used the tissue to dry the mouth of the penis and now used water to do lubricant because of course I didn't have the KY jelly. So I just told the man to try and enjoy the pain. I poured little water in the mouth of the penis now inserted the catheter. Of course I'm sorry it was a painful procedure but the man endured. He was in much more pain than whatever I was doing. So immediately I got the catheter in. I was able to go through and re large amount of urine started coming out. So uh, after I started, after I finished coming out, we didn't have a figure. So what I simply did was I we were able to I, w I was able to fold the catheter more like tie the catheter itself. Uh, I had a syringe, so we, we I inflated the the balloon uh, from just the pure water, the pure water sachet that I was holding. So we tied it. And uh, as we are going, any time, I told him any time he feels like he wants to urinate, we will just unlock it. He will now urinate until we're able to get to a, a, an area where we bought a urine bag. So I now wrote out some antibiotics for this man, gave this man my number. Uh, I was thinking I, I really did a humanitarian work without, without knowing I was going into a real, real, real problem. <clears throat> now, a few days later, about three or four days later, one number called my line. The, number, the man said, uh, a young man, he said that uh, he's in the United States and he, he works with the, he's a med lab scientist. He works in the lab, that he's, a, he's a PhD holder, a med lab scientist. He asked me, were you the man that performed quackery on my father, that you inserted a, a, a catheter under, uh, under, under a, a how do you, uh, under a, a barbaric, that's the language used, under a barbaric condition, inside, inserted a catheter into my father in a barbaric condition without the necessary whatever, whatever. Uh, and then, then my, after that, my father developed fatal uh, bladder infection. 
that they that they've been trying to save the the old man's life. I said, oh really? Uh, he said yes, save the man old man's life. As a matter of fact, that he's going to ruin my career. He's going to deal with me. That he has already sent this number to whoever whoever is going to send number. He has been able to trace whatever he traced. He mentioned, and uh, I didn't know he used the number. Whatever way he used the number, maybe he made some little calls and was able to get my Facebook profile, get my Instagram profile, get my TikTok profile. So he was making trace. He reported to. Someone some other doctors, those those uh, the, some other health professionals, the, those health, he was telling me this. So those health professionals promised again to report this case to Nigeria Medical Council that he will ensure my license is withdrawn. So I was asking him, I don't understand, what in particular are you angry about? He said that I had the ghost. Why did I not move his father to the, why did, why did I not allow the, the car to move his father to the nearest facility? Why did I have to uh, uh, torture his father and, and make his father ego? Ah, Opukaria. Me, I became scared because the threat was just too much and he wasn't just in a, at a call that particular day he called like six or seven times normally i shouldn't i should have stopped picking the calls but i was so worried i kept picking the calls i had to inform my lawyer my lawyer got across to him we didn't know the man was already planning to institute a case in law court but maybe they told him that this is my practice more like my practice so he was not trying to go through the is in nigerian medical council or, uh, or this uh, what do you call it uh, my practice panel all those stuffs so we started appealing. The man said that before he hands off the case, I'm going to pay 100,000 naira. I told him, link me up to your father now. No? Your father was full of thanks that day. Link me up to him. I said, which father? The man that you almost killed with, with fatal infection. Your man, you almost killed. I said, but I wrote antibiotics for this man. What, how else? What else should I have done at that? That man was in dear need of, of, of relief. The guys kept shouting. Kept shout. So uh, I'm just making this video now because... Just this morning, my lawyer called me and told me he has been able to get across to both the father and the boy, and then they've, they've appealed, and the man said, I'm going to pay off uh, the hospital bill, that the hospital bill, they when they charge them 60-something thousand, so I'm going to pay it off. So I sent some money to them, and, uh, <laughs> well, in future, if I'm in a bus and I meet somebody in such a need, I think I will be careful more. I think I'll be very, very careful. I might, not, I might not really want to pass through what I passed through in the last few days because I wanted to be a good Samaritan. Dr. Kafo Chidumeje, CEO at Dr. King Foundation Nigeria, convener, treat at the Lupus Day, the Lupus Day, the Lupus.